Welcome to The Prenup, the wedding-obsessed podcast designed to help you plan your dream day. I'm your host, Adriana, and each week I'm joined by the industry's top professionals, celebs, influencers, and friends who are sharing their best tips, advice, and mistakes they've made so you don't have to. The Prenup is a Love Stories TV podcast. Today, we are chatting with Maria Marzullo, who is not only one of my favorite influencers, but also a 2024 bride. All of us wedding lovers are so looking forward to her Lake Como wedding this August. Maria has already given us so much between her beautiful bachelorette party, her bridal shower, and all of her bridal recommendations. But today, we're going to do a deep dive into the inspiration and ideas behind her Italian extravaganza and all that it takes to go into it. Maria, welcome to the prenup. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I'm so excited to chat with you. You know you're one of my favorites. I tell you all the time. No, like you are the kindest, (laughs) sweetest soul ever. (laughs) I really am. This is now a Maria. Maria Marzullo fan cast. <laughs> <laughs> and it's my first ever podcast, so this is very fitting. We're popping the podcast cherry. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So you and I met at an event I did with Rima Ardaki. and Who I love. Love. We have exciting things that I don't know if we can share yet, but we'll... I don't know. I feel like I can share. Yeah, then I'll share. share. Yeah. So Shh. Rima Ardaki, if anyone doesn't know, is this fabulous, amazing bridal gown designer. If you haven't gotten your dress yet, definitely check her out. But Maria. So Reem asked me personally to be a model in the New York Bridal Fashion Week show that she's having for the brand in October. It's like like Romeo and Juliet meets Lana Del Rey. That's what she told me. She was like, you're a perfect fit. I was like, say less. Sir, I'm there. I'll make you proud, Reem. Oh my gosh. You are <laughs> going to make her so proud. You two, I feel like such a vibe together. Yeah, like, girl bosses. Definitely. Yeah. And just style, class, elegance. Just love you both. But when I when I met you, I was like, oh my gosh, she is just as sweet as she seems. Because even before I met you, mm-hmm. I slid into the DMs yep. because I found you from your bachelorette party. And I was like, what? this girl is bridal goals. We need her on the prenup. We need her giving mm-hmm. us the tips. I have so many. So many thoughts. Oh, my God. And we're getting right into everything. I'm so, so excited today. So before we get into the whole wedding planning of it all, I want to go back. I want to do a little deep dive and give the fiancé some love. We need some context. A little context (laughs) here. Yeah. Tell us about Nick, your fiancé. How did Um, you guys meet? Literally, like, match made in heaven. We met on hinge which is insane so you know what's so funny maria so many you're probably the third guest that i've had that's a bride that specifically met their husband from hinge so Mm -hmm. hinge is the place to meet your husband i feel um if Um, any yes (laughs) seriously any get on hinge if you're single seriously if you are planning your wedding don't get on hinge but (laughs) if you just love weddings and you're listening get on hinge and brides recommend it to your single girls who are looking to find a husband because it seems to be the place i know we literally nick and i posted a reel and it got like 18 million views because it was like hinge based and it was like how you met your person on hinge and the comment section was just flooded with people being like me too, me too, me too, me too. And like also there's way other like different dating apps out there like Facebook. Yes. The craziest names of dating apps. Insane. Totally. But dating apps leads to marriage. I think so. <laughs> well, because you can curate a relationship a little bit better. You can knock out that awkwardness in the beginning yeah. of like, do I really know this person? Up front, you kind of have their interests. You you know a lot you about them. You have the them. background. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit, right? Yeah. Okay, so you and Nick meet on Hinge. Yes. And instant love. Yeah. Like ever since our first date to like today, we haven't gone a day without speaking. Like crazy. Oh my God, that's so cute. So how long were you dating before you got engaged? Um, I think like a year and a half. Okay. Because it was COVID and it was like everything was sped up. Like I met his family so quickly and we also moved in together like six months into dating. Really? Which is a tell-all. You have to move in with your significant other before you get married. I just think that's so important. I agree with you 
wholeheartedly. Lifestyle is your life. So of they need to match it or mesh with it. Listen, no shades to anyone. I know everyone has their reasons that they don't move in together before getting married. Yeah. In my personal opinion, you don't know someone until you live with them. True. It's just if you <laughs> want to check off an important box. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not to say that a marriage won't last if you don't move in together, right. but you're in for a lot less shell shock. Yeah. And it's less stressful. <laughs> Definitely. It's more seamless. Definitely. Like, that way. So you get to know each other really quickly. Mm-hmm. You are, you two seem like you're just best friends, even from. No, like. Social. He's literally my best friend. It's the cutest thing. Like, I'm a husband girly. Like, <laughs> if something happens to me, like, I'm texting Nick. Yeah. Like, any little thing. It's so funny. That's Love really, him. really sweet. Yeah. So, Nick proposes to you. Tell us the proposal story. It's just... Uh, this is, like, the best story ever. Because it's, like, picture perfect. So, we went on this trip to Italy. Of course. We're in Italy. Of course. Um... Uh, it was August of 2022. Uh-huh. We went to Rome. Um, and the first night he proposed because knowing Nick, he could not hold on to that ring smart in man. Italy. Yeah. Very smart man. <laughs> but I wouldn't have had it any other way because then like our entire trip was like our little engagement moon. Yes. And it was so cute. But okay. So the first night that we were there, um, we went to this like park that overlooked the entire city of Rome. It's called Villa Borghese. Uh-huh. And... It was just beautiful. Sunset, like amazing ambiance, weather, like truly the city of love. Got down on one name and Nick, knowing me so well, had a photographer, videographer and violinist that came out of the woodworks. Maria, I love that he had a violinist because the smart fiancés out there know whether they're lady or man, whoever they're proposing to, wants a photographer or videographer. Yeah. But the violinist adds the vibe Mm -hmm. it's a soundtrack to the proposal right and it almost makes it feel like a movie i'm sure it was like a movie that probably was so romantic yeah did you see it coming i was hoping it would happen on the trip yeah so like my fingers were crossed yeah but i like kind of knew when so we got to rome like the first day and our airbnb wasn't ready it was like half an hour that the cleaning ladies needed to finish up so we just went on a walk and we left our bags there they're like oh you can leave your bags here blah 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 can't leave the ring unattended can't leave the ring and nick has never been to italy before also like this was his first time going to italy oh so gosh. i'm sure he was scared of the pickpocketers i had previously studied in rome i okay. was like i'm ch- i'm chilling yeah i love this That's i know the neighborhood this is my home <laughs> but nick put his backpack on like the front of him yeah like a tourist. Cutie. Oh my <laughs> gosh. I, like, I love him already. Mm, perhaps something is in there <laughs> that is very important. <laughs> oh, but That's it was cute. good. It was good. And then I like had outfits laid out and I like asked him like which one I should wear. Um, so he like chose like the dressiest option. Um, I don't know. It just, it really, it worked out. Everything was great. He planned it amazingly. Like those photographer, videographer, and violinists were all Italy based. Like he had only communicated with them through WhatsApp. Okay. So he had never met these people before. He literally had like a signal to give them when he saw them Stop. as we were approaching, like a little ear pull. And the photographer also did the little ear pull. It was really funny. Wait, that's so cute. Yeah. Uh, and if anyone he was like to see, shitting his pants, he's like, what if these people are fake? Like, what do I do? Well, it's scary. And it adds another layer. Proposing in and of itself, I can't imagine I know. doing it. I would be you, shitting Okay, and also the thing when you get engaged is like, you know your man so well. Like, yes. if he's acting even slightly different, you're like, what's up? Uh, yeah, what, what, what are we doing like, here? Come on. What are you doing? Yeah, when my husband proposed, he started talking about his aunt and uncle who had just gotten divorced. Oh. <laughs> right. And I was this like, why us, are we talking about Aunt Donna right now? Like, this is so weird. But right. he he was just like sweating and trying Nervous, to think of things to antic. talk about. I'm like, what are right. you? So, you know, they do interesting <laughs> things. Yeah. But we love them for it. It's sweet them. when they're nervous. Yeah. If they're not nervous, like. I don't know. No, they have to be nervous. They have to be nervous, They right? have to be nervous. David, if you were going to propose to a lady, yeah. would it scare you, do you think? Oh, 100%. Yeah. What's the scariest uh, part, do you think, yeah, about proposing? Scary? I think, like, the part leading up to it. Like, figuring everything out, I think it's like, okay, you kind of know what to do. But, like, the... Like, report, executing it? Yeah, like, the few hours Making sure everything court, goes perfectly. Exactly. Like, yeah. you can't lose the ring. you got to make sure everything's going to go according to plan. And, like, also, guys get nervous for what they say. Also, guys, like, black out. They're like, I have no idea what I said. They do. Yeah. yeah. I don't I don't remember either. Did you black out when Nick proposed? No. No? I was good. Yeah. But 
the um videographer at like mic'd him up after and like was like, Can you just repeat what you said? He was like, No. <laughs> can't can't do that. Sorry. Um, but he like said some like cute words and it was still good. But very sweet. We had a little photo shoot after, called our parents, it was great. And then one thing about getting proposed to abroad mm-hmm. is like the time difference. And like my number one tip, even if we didn't have the time difference, is to wait. 24 hours before telling anybody. Okay. Like, yeah. Literally I like that. just live in a day of just you two and like obviously your parents knowing. Yeah. It's so nice. Well, you know what's really nice ahead. about that is that you can actually enjoy each other instead of being on your phone because people are gonna mm-hmm. be calling you constantly. Oh my god. That like it actually gave me anxiety. I this was like a feeling I didn't think I was gonna have, but yeah. I like I don't know why. I just had this overwhelming feeling of anxiety to tell everyone. Yeah. It well, was because nuts. you know it's just going to be, oh my God, congratulations, which is so great. It's. It, I get overstimulated though. Yes. And I'm like. And then you're just spending your entire like first 24 hours if you tell people, responding to people and yeah. call, you know? Yeah. So I like that. It takes up a lot of time. So definitely take that 24 hours at least to just enjoy it, soak it in before you're just like ambushed with all this outside noise. Well, speaking of taking time, how long did you wait after getting engaged to start planning the wedding? This is – okay, I'll give you, like, the whole timeline. So yeah. we got engaged August, 20, August 2022. Okay. Um, went to Lake Como because our engagement moon was Rome, Positano, Florence, Lake Como. Ugh. And that best trip ever. Gorgeous. Wouldn't recommend it enough. <laughs> and then – so we got back. Our parents threw us, like, a little engagement party literally, like, three days after we got back. Um, perfect. Like, lemons everywhere. Very Italian-themed. Ugh. In Nick's parents' backyard. Very just, like, get everyone together. Let's celebrate. Yes. I didn't want, like, a formal engagement party, personally. Yeah. I just would ra- – I love, like, a a party in the backyard feel, like, especially for my bridal shower. Like, <sighs> Which we're going to get to. I'm so, oh my God, so beautiful. So timeline was we got engaged August 2022. Then we went to Lake Como with our parents, uh, April 2023. And that's kind of where things started to like in the motions because we picked our wedding venue then. Okay. So what made you, I I know you guys love Italy, like you go, but was it always in your mind, we're going to do a destination wedding or, okay. Yeah, and it's funny because we were actually torn between Mexico and Italy for a brief moment in time okay. because Nick's parents have a house there, and um, we spent a lot of time there, had Fun. a lot of memories there, and it's just beautiful there, yeah. but ultimately, we went with Italy because it's Italy, and we also <laughs> ended we ended our trip, like our engagement trip in Lake Como, and we were like, Wow. Like, this is beautiful. Let's come back with our parents and look at venues. So April, we did that, and we also met our wedding planner at the same time. Amazing. Yeah. That's really nice. So how did you go about finding your wedding planner? Because Mm -hmm. when you're planning a destination wedding, especially language barrier, I'm sure a lot of people have these questions. This is, like, so important. Yes. You just, like, the whole topic of wedding planner and finding your best wedding planner. Yes. For me – I have experience, but I guess it's just niche to Lake Como, but I think it's transferable to any wedding planner out there. Mm -hmm. So I reached out and obviously Lake Como attracts wealthy people, very wealthy people. I reached out to, I'm not going to like name her handle, but she's like one of the, probably the most popular Lake Como wedding planner. Okay. I think I know who you're talking about. (laughs) So I reached out to her. I'm like, picture you're just like so excited to have your wedding. I emailed her like this really nice paragraph. And the first thing she like says to me is, what's your budget? And sends me receipts of past (gasps) weddings she's done. That's like a million over. Stop That's the only thing. That was her response to- such a brief email. I'm engaged and inquiring. I'm so excited. Okay, this is what I do. Wow. That was basically that. So I posted a TikTok and I was like, I need help. Can someone, if you- have any recommendations, please let me know. And this other content creator named Blake Healy, shout out to her. So grateful. She recommended- my wedding, my current wedding planner. Her name's Marta um, at Wedding Events Italy is her we'll Instagram. Link her. Yeah, she is <laughs> literally the best. Um, and when I reached out to her, like night and day, I reached out to her, same spiel. And she was like, oh my goodness, this is so exciting. Tell me about you and Nick. 
so that's it was black and white I was like okay this is how a wedding planner should treat you yes and you and your wedding planner have to get along it's kind of like dating oh yeah Maria we talk about this you know you all the time because if you don't drive with your wedding planner up front yeah you are going to hate them on your wedding day specifically someone like a planner or photographer they're spending so much time with you yeah you have to love them and Communication is so important too. I'm glad that you brought really that up. Really important. Because if someone treats you like that, your initial consultation, that's a great indicator of how they're going to treat you the entire time. Like a yeah. number. I was immediately like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's meet. Yeah. So then we met her in person and just as amazing as I thought. We like literally got lunch in the town of Como when we were there. Um, just Nick and I though, our parents uh, stayed behind. And then she toured us to Villa de Este. Um we knew like which venues we wanted to see due to budget because okay. Villa Balbianello, yes. Villa Balbiano, um, Villa Urba, also amazing, amazing options. But then, and they're all is that Bellagio area or that that's like Chernobyl, okay. Tremezzo, all the left side of the lake. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, she brought us to Villa Pizza, which is our wedding venue, and we fell in love. It was It's literally the coolest wedding venue in the entire world. Like, I can't wait for everyone to see it. I am salivating. I'm so no, excited. I know. <laughs> I'm it's so, so excited cool. for you for so many reasons. I mean, you just, you're so beautiful inside out. You're going to be such a gorgeous Thank bride. You. But with that backdrop, Ugh. I know. And also, like, I wanted the venue to speak for itself. So there's not going to be like, crazy things going on like dancers and jugglers like that's not me that's not Nick and I so that won't be our vibe what would you say (laughs) is your vibe is it it's romance it's very ethereal Uh, yeah yeah ethereal is probably the perfect word chic ethereal romantic elevated but also like simple yeah 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 and you don't need much in Como I mean come on it's yeah. You've got everything you need. You barely yeah. need a core. That's why we chose it. <laughs> I mean, when you tell people you're getting married in Como, they're like, oh, my God. Yeah. So yeah. your planner, did she help you with all of your vendors as well? Oh, yeah. So much. Yeah. Literally entertainment, florals, stationery, um, just even like welcome bags. She's ordering things like Italian Amazon <sighs> and recommendations for like hair and makeup. The that's only so person important. that's not Italy based for our wedding vendor wise is our content creator. Okay. She's from California. Uh, and shout her out. Who's that? Stacy. Um Stacey. her handle is the BTS Bride. She's literally been featured in Vogue, like New York Times. Um, and She's I actually really had the pleasure of meeting her. She was one of my first people I hired. I was like, I need a content creator. Totally. Um, but I had the pleasure of meeting her in New York Bridal Fashion Week fall of 2023, okay. I believe. And we I, we went to a show together like really vibes and she is the best and she has such an eye she for does content so yeah I'm we'll really link excited. everyone because people yeah. are gonna want to know if people Absolutely. don't follow you already once they see your page and mm-hmm. see you know what you're doing with your wedding they're gonna I want everyone to use my people <laughs> they're going to they're, <laughs> they're definitely going now. to you are you're the, the best inspo. team so For a destination wedding, something that you have talked about, which I think is really important to bring up for brides, is Mm -hmm. the fact that it works for you and Nick, but it may maybe might not work for all the guests necessarily that you're inviting. Right. So concessions have to be made. And I think that's a hard pill to swallow for brides when they're planning a destination wedding. Mm -hmm. So no one's saying you can't do it, but you have to be prepared for people to not be able to go. So Mm -hmm. do you have any advice for brides on kind of swallowing that pill, both doing what they want to do and realizing that maybe it doesn't work for everyone else? Yes. So at the, I think like at the end of the day, it's like you and your significant other's day and whatever you want. So Nick and I both knew we wanted destination. We did not want 250, 300, even 400 people at our wedding. It's just too crazy overwhelming we also knew we didn't want it in the states we wanted multiple days of events because we didn't want it to feel like a one night like birthday party type of vibe of course so um I think also for us what we did for our guests was we gave them ample time to plan Mm -hmm. to budget um because we also needed that time 
to plan and budget, sure. but they also need the time. So having our two year engagement was so crucial. I mean, when we got back from Italy, we were like, everyone, we're getting married in Italy, like mark your calendars. Yes. But I think giving them that time, we have like a really good turnout, like 135. Wow, which is insane. We invited 180 about, and I feel like that is like so good. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot. I would not say no to an Italy wedding. Nor would I. I'm oh. there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, care if it's a friend of a friend. <laughs> I'm going. Absolutely. You're not going to not. Oh, yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be really wonderful. What I want to get into next is some of the surrounding events. So a lot of our brides are getting hyped up for their bachelorette parties, their showers, things like that. I want to start with your bachelorette party because that's how so I fun. initially found you. And I was like, this girl's got it going on. This is how bachelorette parties should be. Yes. So you did Kiowa? Yeah. We stayed in Kiowa um, and we did like a day in Charleston. So fun. Yeah. So give us a, like a mini play-by-play. -play. What, was, what was the entire vibe and style of the bachelorette? Um, it was more like a girl slumber party, like very relaxed. Um, I also have like a kick-ass maid of honor and she lived like two hours away from where we were staying. So I was able to get everything shipped to her. Amazing. But we had this really amazing Verbo and I'll even like link it if anyone wants it, but yes. it was such a nice house. I also had like 16 girls. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Which that's is a lot. A lot. Yeah, it <laughs> so is. we needed a big Airbnb. For sure. And my maid of honor like reached out to the guy personally and was like, listen, like we want to make this as affordable as we can, which was like a big component to me because these girls are also traveling, traveling to Italy. Sure. Um, and she got the price down like by thousands. I love girls haggle. saved oh my gosh. that money. Yes. But also <laughs> like bachelorette, I didn't know before even being a bride that brides didn't pay for anything. And I was like, no, like I can't do that. What's so your opinion I contributed on that? to everything. I know for you, you were so generous and you were like, no, I want to, I want to contribute, which is like yeah. so sweet. But what's your opinion on brides paying versus not paying? Okay. This is just my take. Like totally. maybe other people are like, don't pay, but I don't know. It Little costs add up, mm -hmm. especially Airbnb, flights, dinners, drinks. Yes. Like if my, my girls want to buy me like a drink when we're out, like sure. Love that. Of course. But I'm paying for my own flight. I'm contributing to the Airbnb. Yes. I didn't want to do the cringy Venmo uh, Instagram post, but I did <laughs> to cover costs of decorations and like any expenses that we had. That Groceries. actually reminded me of a story. I had a bride who her um, maid of honor did the Venmo request for a bachelorette mm -hmm. party, which whether you think it's cringy or not, like everybody does it. Everyone just like, does it. I know fine. I did it's it. Not, it's, it's not a big fine. deal. It's fine. But this maid of honor did it for one of my brides. Okay. And it was going to the maid of honor's Venmo and she okay. was pocketing the money. <gasps> okay, yes. Which this you also have a maid of honor. So that <laughs> wouldn't happen on yours. But I was like, oh. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I, shocking. Yeah. You want to put that money towards the bachelorette. Definitely. For sure. That's oh, what it's for. How are you going to do the bride like that? That's, yeah. That's not right. That was nuts. But to your point, I think in the days of old when bachelorette parties were, you know, a one night dinner, go into the club. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, your girls pitch in. They pay for your dinner. They pay for your drinks. Right. But that's it. Yeah. We do things a little bit differently now. We're taking these lavish trips and it's so fun. I it's wouldn't... nice. Also, the biggest thing is like you can't be mad at anyone for saying no. No, no. Even for the wedding, like going back to that, like we are not holding anything above people's heads for not coming to our wedding. They can't afford it. They can't come. That's okay. Of course. And That's all right. I say this all the time. Even if you are a bajillionaire and mm -hmm. you can pay for every facet of everyone's everything for the yeah. wedding as yeah. far as your guests are concerned – it's still not going to work for some people. And mm -hmm. that is okay. That's not an indication of how much they love mm -hmm. you, how much they support you. Just because they can't celebrate with you on that night, on your wedding day, doesn't mean they don't support and your And communication marriage. is key. Like, I think in all aspects of wedding-related events and things, mm -hmm. you need to communicate with people, like, regardless of bachelorette, wedding day. Like, if you want them included, if, if you don't want them included, like – just communicate. Just say it. Just say it. It's okay. And like, it's yeah. okay at the end of the day. Yes. And if it's not, then 
then so you bye <laughs> But yeah, as a bride, I feel like for me, it was big on communication and just letting people know, like, if you can't come to certain things, like, it's okay. Definitely. One thing I want to touch back on your bachelorette party that you did that I loved so much yes. was hire a photographer for you oh and your girls. Oh, my God. I, I don't know why pe- people don't do this more. I, they're when, not thinking. When not thinking. else are all these girls that you love going to be in one place besides your wedding? Yes. And this is just like you're girling out. Totally. So document it. Yes. Get all up. Like yeah. it's it's such a good idea. And it's another way to commemorate the whole thing. Absolutely. We had an amazing photographer and I wanted it to be playful. It was on the beach. Like it was very picturesque and just perfect. Everyone should do it. You girls look gorgeous. And you're right. Everyone should do that. Add that mm-hmm. to the list of bachelorette party <laughs> activities, girls. And free people also dressed all of us, which was so beyond oh my, my gosh. wildest dreams. That And your girls probably just loved that. See, yeah. it's, if you can do something that feels more like a girl's trip that you're like celebrating each other and mm-hmm. it's a reason to get away, people are much more inclined to want to go and celebrate but that probably just speaks to who you are as a friend like your girls are probably just so excited to be there for you (laughs) and I also wanted to like harness all the partnerships for them yeah to like spoil them so like my goodie bags were like full of like my favorite things like Peter Thomas Roth under eye (gasps) patches pharmacy beauty slip pillowcase like the eye masks those Mm -hmm. were like a fan favorite oh yeah and I got those embroidered with like all their names on them stop from abode in New York yeah it was so good. And Sol de Janeiro. There's like, and oh, and I also got them like phone cases from Bobble Bar at the like asking of the bridesmaids party and they all still have them on their phones. That's so cute. Yeah. And they always get compliments on it. So like, I just like love spoiling my friends. So you're that, was, a that was nice. But also like, <laughs> even if you're not an influencer, like reach out to brands. Yeah. Like so wh- how would gift. you say is a good way to do that? If like, let's say one of our brides is listening and they're like, I would love to do some gifting. Like it's, what's a, what's something that you could send to a brand that might get their attention and have it them It sounds like too easy, but just an Instagram DM. Really? Mm-hmm. And just ask for their email. Like just give us really small spiel. Um, like love your brand, would love to incorporate into my bachelorette. Like do you have an email for partnerships? Amazing. Yeah. yeah, shoot your shot. The worst shoot they can it. say is no. That's literally the saying that my dad taught me since I was young. Oh, my God. We love dad. Yeah. Oh, is your dad really excited for your wedding? Yeah. Are you only daughter? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it's, he's going to cry. It's bittersweet. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Nick, Nick's dad, too, is also a crier, so then they're just going to sob. Oh, it's going to be so all cute. Of our entire family is just going to cry so much. Oh. But I'm getting them, like, little handkerchiefs with, like, engraving. It's cute. I love it's that. Cute. That's You'll a good gift. Mm-hmm. I want to go into next your bridal shower, which Loved. was just this like coquettish garden party. It felt so relaxed and mm-hmm. almost casual, but beautiful. Yeah, it was honestly perfect. And the weather all weekend was perfect. Thank God. Yeah. Because there was no plan B. Yeah. Well, there was, but like I didn't want it to resort to that. Totally. But, <laughs> um, it was also like a family affair. Okay. So um, my number one tip for bridal showers, like get as much family involved as you can. Like I went sourcing for vintage vases with my grandparents. My grandma loves sewing and she loves a project. So I gave her the project of making that huge bow that was on the arch. Oh my gosh. She nailed it. It was so good. How did she do this? It was unbelievable. She just worked in her basement Sent me progress pics. How big She's was like, it? She's like, how it many yards be... of fabric do I need? I think it was like 70 yards, 60 oh yards. Oh my gosh. Yeah. She like stuffed the um, ribbons with some things. But when wow. I posted a video, um, people were like, can your grandma make me one? And I was like, grandma, people want you to make one. She's like, just for you. Oh my Sorry. gosh. Well, it's so nice. Even if your grandma can't make a fabulous bow like Maria's can. <laughs> People do want to get involved. Yeah. So no, they do. Like, they want to help. Yeah, so when your people family wants ask to ask you for, like, how can I help? Give them something. Give them something. Anything can be done. Pick yes. up the flowers. Or, My, like, ask them, what What do you like? What are you good at? Like, what would you love to contribute? Yes. Because they might Delegating have Delegating is, like, the number one tip for brides to stay stress, less stress-free. Oh, my God. Don't be the hero. 
Yeah. You don't have to do it all. Like people <laughs> coming can from help a control you. freak like me, like <laughs> you can delegate tasks. My yes. my father in law made my welcome sign that I put my flowers in, and he also literally handmade the arch that the bow went on. Stop. Yeah. Oh, that is so sweet. That was like amazing, and I also like helped. Um, them set everything up the day before. Yeah. So that was really special. Your bridal shower stood out to me as different from a lot of bridal showers that I've seen, been to. Um, it it very much was a soiree as far as I could mm-hmm. tell. So a lot of engagement among your guests with each other. Right. You had something that I loved, a coffee bar. Oh my gosh. This was she, epic. It's, it's um, bar with me. She reached out to me and it's so funny. She lived 10 minutes down the road from where I was having my bridal shower. And, Stop. And like coffee and me are like the same. Like we are, <laughs> <laughs> I am coffee, coffee. You are a coffee me. girl. Always so, on your Insta, you're getting I had coffee. an iced pistachio latte <laughs> waiting for me when I came down. It was literally the best. So coffee bars, so good. So your good. guests will thank you. We also did my bridal shower in the evening. It started at 4 p.m. So oh, beautiful. a little pick me up. Yes. Um, yeah, that was great. I love that. And then Nick came and joined you at the bridal shower. You yeah. did the little champagne. Oh toast. my God, the champagne oh. showers. Oh, we did like really two cute. of them. Yeah. The photos we from love that are it. really good. And you did yeah. content creation for your bridal shower as so well. So right? I just hired a photographer, okay. Stack Studios. Okay. She is so talented. She photographs like A listers every other day. Um, but she's, was a good friend. I met her at an event, awesome. actually, um, a Cynthia Rally event. And we just, hit it off. We got coffee. Yeah. It's cool to have that because again, it's one of those things that you want to commemorate mm-hmm. and you don't want your bridesmaids or your mom or your aunts taking those photos. You want them to be present and enjoying exactly. themselves. So she was the best. She literally captured every single photo that I could have ever thought of. Yeah. So and nice. we had the cake was from Lucy and oh. I couldn't recommend if you're in New York City girl and your bridal shower soon get your cake from from lucy it was so good it was carrot cake and pistachio cake oh Car- my don't God. sleep on carrot cake also don't sleep on carrot, carrot cake. cake is probably your guest's favorite cake heavenly it's <laughs> yeah. so good i mean i'm not partial i to don't anything. like yeah, I don't discriminate, discriminate. Yeah. <laughs> i will eat anything but it is a little anything. bit superior yeah it's it's quite delicious and pistachio oh my gosh it's pistachio is my all-time favorite it's so freaking gelato good. too mm. i'm a gelato pistachio girly oh my gosh yes. pistachio pistachio in italian <laughs> in italian you're an italian girly you know yeah. <laughs> So we touched on surrounding events. Now I want to get to the main event, which is the wedding. We're 22 days from your wedding right now. Okay. So by the time this airs, your wedding. Yeah, when is this? When are people going to listen? So your wedding will have already passed by the time it airs, but not long after because I switched some things around so that we can like get your wedding content and then we can post the episode so we can have everything just rolling right in because I know people are going to be dying for this. Yeah. I am. Yeah. Um, But I want to talk (laughs) about. I'm like, yeah. (laughs) Well, no, they are. I don't know. Maybe. (laughs) No, they are. Okay. Definitely. Tune in. So, <laughs> so I want to talk about some of the less traditional things that you're doing for your wedding because okay. I I do think that no you I wrote are... some of these down because I don't want to forget. Oh yeah, okay. Me and she my comes notes. prepared, David. Don't we love this? Oh, we love this. <laughs> um, okay, okay, okay. I have a few things. Brooches, a wedding Instagram, and bachelorette invites. Okay. Brooches. Okay. Yes. On the oh, lapels. I love that you did this. Tell everyone what you did with the brooches. This really like took off running when I posted it. So I got my inspo of this from the Met Gala. Okay. Um, And I had always really not loved how flowers looked. Yeah. Just personally, it just brought me back to junior prom. Like a boutonniere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And while they can look amazing, this is just something I wanted to experiment with. And I I know it's going to be amazing. I've already seen like – the NBA draft. Like the men were wearing brooches. It's going to be a thing. It's going to be a thing. Anyways, we got them from eBay. So cheap. Six dollars a piece. What made you go eBay? What were what was the thought process <laughs> so behind this? Because it's a good idea. Was, like sponsored by eBay. <laughs> okay. I'm obsessed. And yeah. also like affordable and vintage and like Yes. You know, for I don't know. 
that's a good thing that people like to do. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. It's um, less waste, which is so much yes. waste in weddings. So mm-hmm. if you can recycle some things, it's good yeah. for the ecosystem. And people loved it, though. They were like, where can I get these? I was like, literally eBay. Oh, my gosh. They are gorgeous. I so cannot smart. wait for them to wear them. And they're not going to wilt. Yeah. Um, eBay, like, even if your wedding is in, like, two weeks, like, they'll come in time. eBay shipping is great. Is it? Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right, eBay. Don't have to wait long. I love it. I Sponsor love- me. <laughs> Sp- I Sp- love Sp- eBay. Sponsor the pod. Sponsor Maria. Let's go. Come on, eBay. It's um, great for weddings. But also a wedding Instagram. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. So I have never seen this done before. That's crazy to me. Crazy. Actually, like not really because I feel like this is a very content creator thing to do. Yes. Some people like websites they're like my grandma doesn't have instagram and i'm like my grandma does i don't know yeah like what's it telling you yeah like it works for me it might not work for you but if it does work for you i couldn't recommend it enough because i'm still posting like little announcements like take out euros go to your bank like little last minute reminders to your story instagram like Mm -hmm. you know this is what we're wearing this is oh my god yeah i have like, do you want to see it? Yes, I want to see it. I want to see it. Girls, um, this is such a good idea to do a wedding Instagram because people torture the bride with questions. Oh, my God. And if you can have That's a That's what's feed, making me go crazy right now. So are people bothering you right now? Yeah. But <laughs> we love them, okay, but they're bothering us. So, like, this is it. Okay. This and is also, it. Canva is your best friend. Slay. This is... <laughs> <laughs> um, I put like what to wear for the wedding day, what to wear for the welcome party, um, travel Q and A. We have hair and makeup hair and recommendations, makeup, which especially for a destination wedding, mm-hmm. that is so the important. The girls want to feel their best, and I'm like, okay. Well, and here you like go. cute pictures of you and Nick. It's just like this is so outfit inspo. Oh my gosh, this Canva is so smart. Is registry. your best friend as a yeah? Oh, your registry links, all the links. Yes. Also, I have highlights, amazing, so they can go back to it. Um, but also like on like the last like swipe, I have a kind PS. The bride is very busy. So <laughs> if you could direct your text to my mom and my maid of honor, that would be super. You are brilliant for that because yeah. that is something that so many brides deal with in the month leading yes. up to their wedding. They're like, the, when is it? Yeah. Where uh, is it? I'm like, are you what, shitting What me? should I be wearing, this or that? It's like, figure it out. I told you a while ago. Yeah. And this is just a PSA to anyone who's a wedding guest. Exhaust every avenue before asking the bride. <laughs> Ask anyone Ask before anyone. the bride. Check the website. Check the wedding Instagram if yes. they have one. Check the invitation. Check with other guests. Check with anyone in the bridal party. Mm-hmm. Last Last resort, resort, especially weeks leading up to the wedding. Yes. That should be illegal. Because it's a very, very stressful time for bride. It is. My phone has never been on Do Not Disturb as much as it has. You're smart to do it. I love that you said direct your questions to, Mm -hmm. it was mom and who else? My maid of honor. Mom and maid of honor. Yeah. That's all. That's all. I could have put more people on there, but. No, that's perfect because it gives them an option and. Yeah. If they can't get the answer from them, like, they'll relay the questions, too. It's kind of like a funnel, so you don't have them coming from yes. every which way. And also, my maid of honor loved it. She was like, give me anything you need. Like, how can I help? She was like, yes. I got my first wardrobe, like, question today. Like, Cute. it was so fun. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, love that for you. And you're already talking with your maid of honor often. So if she's yeah. like, oh, this person had a question, it doesn't feel as like, oh, my God, yeah. I have to answer this person. Yeah. Get back to them right away. It, the, your maid of honor is a good middle person. Yes. Um, so you're not as stressed. Yes. Yeah. And also we made like a close friends for our story for just the bridal party. Oh, cute. For That's like a good idea. To tell the bridal party, like, come to the welcome party at this time so we can rehearse yeah. the ceremony. I love that. That was another fun thing. That's really smart. Yeah. Okay. So we have some great tips Wedding there. Instagram. <laughs> Wedding People Instagram. can talk to you on it. It's so good. Then a website. Yeah. Just, like, a website it feels a little bit distant. And then there's mm-hmm. also... Not really. I mean, I guess there are Q&As on websites, but it feels a little bit awkward to put them through there. It's like... Yeah. And they can comment on your posts, ask more questions if yeah. they need to, DM you. Of course. And it's a little bit of a degree of separation because it's not a text message, but mm-hmm. you're still going to check it probably more often yeah. than you would check And obviously, like, website. Nick also has access to it, so he also answers people if they have questions, too. Another thing that's so great about it is that the updates come up. So when you go on Instagram... If your wedding has a new story, yeah. people will check that out. If you're updating Literally. your wedding website, people aren't – They're not always on your wedding website. No. <laughs> Why would they be? That, that would be crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Instagram – So smart. Is the way to go. Wait, my last one. I don't want to forget. Oh, yes. 
Oh, bachelorette invites. Bachelorette invites. So cutie. So cute. And it was so inexpensive. It sets the tone, too. Mm-hmm. It- Rather than just like a group text, like, oh, we're going to Vegas. Woo. Yeah. Like, send like a nice, cute little graphic. We got ours from Etsy. So, so cute. I like pinned it on my reels because it literally popped off. Like, carrots and cake um, reposted it. So many people reposted it. I love it. Um, Yeah. People love love the newness. They do. Which I love. And you're just There's creating – You're creating something different than the traditional. And you're not veering so far. It's like we're going to bungee like adapting. jump. But while no, we I say know. our vows. You're just I've like, seen that video. There's like a girl that's like, oh, I'm going to cut my hair. Like I'm going to go bald actually for my wedding after party. Like what are you doing? Yeah, that <laughs> – to me, that just feels like doing People something different for their wedding for the sake yeah. of being different. No, it needs than, to be you. Yes. Nick, it was actually Nick's idea for the wedding Instagram was also because he was like, Maria, you do this all the time. Like it'd be way easier for you. And I'm like, you're right. So it's fun. We're just like adapting the wedding traditions to better fit us. I bet you we are going to see so much more of that because of you. I hope so. <laughs> well, speaking of grooms, you brought up Nick, our, our king. Yes, our king. We, we often overlook grooms here. Sorry, grooms. Uh, but uh, yeah. I do want to give them a little bit of love. And I'm sure you had a big hand in helping Nick and the groomsmen with everything that they need. Yes. Can you give us some good recommendations for grooms, whether it's like grooms wear or yeah. anything? So shameless plug, we're working with Suit Shop for our wedding. Love Suit Shop. Suit Shop is so affordable. Yes. And they keep the tuxedo. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just like so seamless. You make a group on the Suit site Shop. And you list all the things that the groom needs, that the father of the bride needs, father of the groom, whatever. You list what they need and they just hit like purchase. Yeah. They make and it so, so easy. It's so seamless. They so I'm a suit shop affiliate and my grooms who oh, use it, like perf. they say it's so easy. They love they it. Love and the I always fit. recommend them because yeah. of that. And the only thing that they need to do is get the pants tailored to their exact length, which is the easiest thing ever. It, so cheap. Yeah. But yeah. otherwise, yeah, they fit well and you mm-hmm. can get the lining in there. And yeah. it's, it doesn't have to be so astronomical, especially for people who, whether you are going to wear this suit or not, again, like you need it for the wedding day. So yeah. to spend a billion dollars And now they're like, it, now I have one in exactly. my closet if I have a special occasion. Exactly. Thank you. And they're sharp. Nick, they're welcome. modern. And I just, forgive me. I'm so sorry. But there are exceptions to the rules. So don't come for my throat. <laughs> I typically do not look like the way rentals look. They are yeah. ill-fitting. They So many people have worn them before. Like the skeevy. No, like my um, brother-in-law got married and like one of their bow ties like broke. I was like, why do you want that stress? Exactly. You, you don't need that. So yeah, yeah everything's brand new for you. Know you know fits you. It's per- exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Suit- and also their team is so nice at Suit Shop. Yeah. We went to the Suit Shop in person and we made it like a really fun day, actually. I really liked this. Uh-huh. Um, you know how like the girls go shopping for their wedding dress? Yeah. Go with your dads and your um, significant other and like the, maybe their brothers or whoever their best man is yeah go and like watch them try their tuxedos on make sure they like the fit and like the collar like which one looks best on them um and really make a day for them yeah that's it a was really, good really idea. fun I love yeah. that so they they have one in Philly um that's their closest one to New York mm-hmm. um and they have two other locations I forget where they are okay but but you can get them fun. shipped too that's oh my god the, they come in two days mm-hmm. it's yeah. easy and if there's anything wrong with it they're so good about like let's switch it out yeah. let's get the better fit they're, they're so they're good. awesome um love your suit shop love suit shop <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's even seeking get your here. suits from suit shop <laughs> even if it's no like even if it's not for a wedding yeah like any special occasion and they have women's suits they have like yeah. they have everything they're, they have everything and all really the great. accessories they have too like the little pocket squares cufflinks yes shoes yes um speaking of shoes there's another brand that i love okay let's hear it um duke and dexter okay it's i think it's europe it's a european based brand but they make one of one shoes which we love custom for weddings of course and so it was cute because Nick got my wedding shoes for me and I got him a couple pairs of shoes for the welcome party and the after party. Cute. So that's I did really like nice. a one of one for him for the welcome party. And they say like that's amore with like a little kiss. It's very, very, very cute. You guys will have seen it by now. Love it. And then um, 
the after party shoes is literally a hand painting of Lake Como on the shoe. Stop it. It's so cool. Oh my God, I can't wait to see these. Yeah, they're sick. Um, she just emailed me today that they're coming in in like three days. So this is through Duke and Dexter? Duke and Dexter. Okay. Yeah, amazing. The Duke and Dexter account, and then there's at Duke and Dexter one of one. Okay. Yeah. And oh. the girl that does them is so sweet. Like she sends you. Um, drafts of what you're describing and then you choose the best one I love it yeah I love it you always have the leg up on on these things the customization and you know as an influencer I'm sure so many people reach out to you you go to a lot of events you see Mm -hmm. a lot of different products so from your experience in being inundated with all these kind of fun trends and wellness beauty specifically bridal yeah what kind of recommendations can you give to brides that you're kind of seeing on the horizon of what's like new and on the cusp? This is like perfect <laughs> leeway. Um, okay, so two things in bridal and beauty. Yes. Is I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of content creators partnering with makeup brands. Mm. Um, And if you are a beauty brand listening, Laura Mercier has set the bar high because (laughs) they're partnering with me for my wedding, um, which is insane. They did my makeup for my bridal shower. We've had a few um, posts leading up to the wedding. But they're flying out like makeup artists for me and my bridesmaids and my moms. Oh my gosh. Um, but like if you're listening and you love a beauty brand and um, you want to work with them and you're getting married, yeah. um, just reach out. It's like a win-win for you and the brand. Absolutely. Like it's insane. And also I knew personally I didn't want like a ki- – I didn't want to not look like myself. I already use Laura Mercier products. Yes. I've worked with the team for years. It was very organic. Mm-hmm. They also wanted to tap into bridal. Okay. So literally timing couldn't have been more perfect. Oh. Um, but I do think we're going to see more of that because it is such a win-win. Yeah, for and sure. And the second thing was with beauty – um, I do think we're also going to start seeing girls doing their own makeup even for Definitely. their wedding day. So it's, do you know Ashley Lopez? She's uh, a content creator as well. She's, I don't know. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. She she does fashion, but she was on, and I, I love her content as well, yeah. but she was just the maid of honor in her cousin's wedding. She's oh, also nice. a bride to be. Hey, Ash. <gasps> oh, um, but her, she and her maid of honor, um, and I'm sorry. Ashley was the maid of honor, Mm -hmm. bridesmaids, and bride. She did this really cute reel of all of them. They had adorable setups where they had their individual mirrors, and they all kind of had this, like, long table where they were facing each other but all doing their makeup. Wait, that's so cute. I loved it. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so cute. So I reposted it with a disclaimer. If you are – not a makeup girly. Do not try this at home. Like, right. You have to know it's if your you, makeup look. If you know your routine, yes. you love how you look when you do your makeup, mm-hmm. girls are going to do their own makeup. Totally. Why would yeah. they spend that pretty penny to one – have the risk of not liking it or just not looking like themselves for sure well my husband hates when I get my makeup done he's like yeah that's a that's like a very common thing (laughs) yeah (laughs) he doesn't look like like you who are you you look like RuPaul and I do (laughs) (laughs) no it's so funny even with hair too hair mm, maybe not so much I feel like hair is tricky (laughs) hair is hard yeah but if you again like if you are good and you love the way you do your own hair yeah like go for it just because Everyone, Everyone else hair is done. paying for it. Like, you don't have to. You don't have to. I yeah. love that. That's really good advice. Yeah. So on the topic of hair, makeup, all those things, mm-hmm. prior to your wedding, you've got it coming up. Yes. Did you implement anything new in, you know, beauty routine, lifestyle, fitness, anything like that? Did you change, add, subtract anything? I didn't change anything. Okay. I think – so overarching theme, no one should change their body for their wedding. For sure. But you want to feel good, obviously. Of course. So for me, the month before my wedding, I started doing 12, 3.30 every day. Okay. Um, phones and for on. anyone who doesn't know 12, 3.30, yes. explain it to them. Okay. It's 12 incline, three speed for 30 minutes. Yes. Um, I've done 12, 3.60 too. Okay. When you're re- yeah. like just distract yourself like yeah. read a book scroll Watch edit videos yeah anything mm-hmm. it's so good I've literally been doing it for 13 days straight now um I literally did it this morning fabulous but I've been pairing it with Pilates I feel so strong oh yeah um I used to just do Pilates berries um 
hot yoga, okay. but I wasn't seeing any results. I wasn't feeling good, but this has made me feel so good. And yeah. like <clears throat> people have literally been noticing. Um, so I've been doing that for like workout routine. Love it. But I've also been wearing very minimal makeup. Okay. I really haven't been wearing that much makeup. I don't really wear that much as it is, but yeah. less. Um, no nail polish. I've literally been growing out my natural nails until I get like, I think I want to get like that Russian manicure to last me like weeks. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But I've just been growing my natural nails. Love it. Um, taking in the sun, phones on D&D. &D. Trying to, <laughs> yeah, be a little stress free. <laughs> Taking but care yeah. of your your overall, yeah, well being, your mental yeah. health is so Pilates important. though is like the biggest thing for me. I love it. It's the best. Isn't I'm it? a big Pilates. Girl. What's your go to Pilates? Do you go to classes? Do you have? I have Gym Pass because okay. Nick has Gym Pass, so I'm like on his account. Love it. Um, I go to Natural Pilates in Soho. Okay, it's just easy for me to get to. It's literally five minutes from where I live. Yeah, but it's more of an athletic Pilates. It's hard. Like uh, today, is, is it and reformer or is it? Mad? Yeah, it's reformer. Okay, and they have all the things. I also like Terra Pilates. It's like a new like little exclusive little Pilates club. Cute. Um, that's fun. No far. I love. It's a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more like stretching if you need an off day. Okay. Um, but yeah, I've been dripping sweat like every day I've, I've left natural, maybe because it's 90 degrees in yeah, New York, but it's also what? air conditioned in there. I don't know. They work you really hard. The heat wave is good. Like I think sweating out the toxins is so underrated. Like just going oh, in the sauna. Wait, also I have a higher dose sauna blanket. Ooh, do you like yeah, it? Yeah, I love it. I hear good things about it, but I I'm... sweat everything out. Really? Yeah. Okay. Nice. How often do you do that? Um, I'll try to do it. If like I'm doing 12, 3, 30 in the evening, I'll do that. And then I'll jump in the sauna blanket because I'm already sweaty. Yeah. But I could do it every night if I had time for it. But I try to do it as much as I can. Okay. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's if an it underrated works in the beauty hack. Like it's, it's just so good for everything. Saunas. But... I think I'm like on sauna TikTok or whatever, <laughs> but they are saying that saunas are really good for your overall health. Hell yeah. I think it like decreases your risk of heart attack by like 80%. Oh my God. I'm not a doctor. Don't call me on that. <laughs> We're but... doctors of weddings today. <laughs> that is, those are my things that I do. I love it. Oh, and moisturizing. Very important. A good moisturizer is yeah. the key to life. Yeah. Do you have one that you love that you can recommend? Oh my God. Yeah. The Charlotte Silvery Magic Cream. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's and nice the... and thick. Bioma um, retinol oil for nighttime. Okay. It's like a beginner's retinol. Love it. It's stunning. Perfection. Okay. Yeah. Maria, I want to give you a minute to do a little bridal rant. What's pissing you off right now <laughs> in your wedding planning journey? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I touched on this a little bit, but just like people asking me questions. <laughs> like it seems so mean for me to like complain. It's not mean. It's not mean. It's so relatable and people but I feel literally, bad about saying it. That's the, I know. the thing. But, but I, everyone I, feels it. With the wedding Instagram, like I try to lay out literally every detail, every keyword that they could possibly think of as far as wardrobe goes. Yeah. Um, it's like solid patterns, these colors. Yeah. And it's like, is purple okay? I'm like, no. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm so sorry. Is no. it on the list? Is it there? No. No. <laughs> so that's why I made that little um, graphic of don't text me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And people are like, Mary, are you really that busy? I'm like, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, people who have gotten married or close to someone who's gotten married like they yeah. get it yeah but you only get it when you're in it like totally. I also have a friend that's also going to be a bride in like two weeks and she feels the same way yeah there's so many people asking last minute questions yeah. just don't be that person don't be that person yeah, yeah no one wants to be that person that's really the only thing though um I didn't think I was going to be as stressed out as I was a month before though yeah I literally made like a video because someone reminded me of this it's like even if you're so stressed about like all these things, like literally all that matters is you and your significant other getting married at the end of the day. That's it. That's literally all that matters. That's it. That is truly. Everything else is extra. Absolutely. Yeah. You're, you're so right. And it's the biggest reminder. Keep that in the back of your mind. It's like, it's not going to take the stress away, but it yeah. will ground Everything's you. Everything's still stressful, but yeah. you need that grounding. <laughs> <laughs> you need to know that that's all that really matters. Well, let's take it to the positive. What have yes. you really just loved about wedding planning? Okay, well, having my wedding Instagram, definitely, um, I feel like it's something I'm good at and mm -hmm. something I could put my all into. Yeah. Um, 
having being closer with my family and my friends during this time yes because we've gotten together so much and I think it's such a treat to have all my favorite people in one place on multiple occasions yeah that's probably the best part yeah um and just like being so in love being so excited for the day um and planning my honeymoon is also really like my favorite part (laughs) Oh, you're so going to enjoy that excited. honeymoon, girl. That's we are going – we're having like um, a chill day after the wedding on the 8th and then we're going straight to Positano <sighs> on the 9th, staying at the best hotel ever, um, Il San Pietro in Positano. It's literally the hotel that's like in the rocks. Like it's built into the rocks. Oh, my gosh. It's crazy. And then we're going to Greece. Where in Greece are you going? We're going to Santorini and Milos. <laughs> yeah. How long's your honeymoon? Um, the 9th to the 18th. Fabulous. That's yeah. perfect. Nick has to get back to work. So um, I was like, can we take a last minute stop to Palermo? Like I want to go to Sicily and he wants to go to Sicily, but he's like, I have to get back to work. Yeah. Like ultimately I do like want Nick to try to become like a little like male influencer. I love that. And he kind of already is. He's doing like a he's good at job. It. When he is featured in your videos, I'm Everyone like Everyone loves him. Star quality. Yeah. Yes. Everyone's like Maria, more Nick. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, what can I do? He well, just then you guys can go to Palermo whenever you want. You can work yeah. from anywhere. No, I really like financial freedom is everything. And yeah. like to me, I always knew I wanted to be a content creator. Like I never just like got into it. Like I always created content ever since yeah. high school like I posted my little outfit I posted my new like Steve Madden shoes and posted them on my Instagram feed with the sapia filter cutie um it was just like I was lucky enough that this was a career but now that I have a taste of like being my own boss like I am a little bit more busy but I'm on my own schedule and like doing what I want and, and you love what you're doing yeah. yeah and you're very good at it thank you you're welcome. it's been a long time coming <laughs> So I don't know. We'll see where that takes us. He also loves his job. So yeah, we'll see. Well, I'm so excited to see not only your wedding, but all the wonderful things that you do. Because I, again, I mean, I just gush over you. I'm such <sighs> a fan. You're just you're such a lovely girl. And I'm <laughs> I'm honored. I'm honored that you're here. So Maria, we have given brides a lot to yeah. sit with today, but we're going to do two more things for them today. Okay. One is all. called premarital counseling. Premarital counseling is a segment that we do here every episode. Okay. We take a listener question and we give them some advice or we answer the question depending on what it is. They're always a little bit different. Okay. Today's is a little bit heavy. Oh. But you are- It's fine. Yeah. You're such a sweetheart and you're so level-headed that I think you'll be a good person to give advice. We always change names. So we're going to call her Leslie. Okay. And she did request several times to be anonymous. So, (laughs) Leslie, hello. You'll know it when you hear it. (laughs) Leslie says, hi, I love the prenup and pick up so many tips for my future wedding. Thank you, Leslie. I recently got engaged in June, but I'm a wedding lover and have been saving ideas for my wedding for years, lol. Thank you so much for sharing all the planning tips. I'm excited to put them to use, but I first need some advice. Please keep the submission anonymous, but my family Mm -hmm. does not approve of my fiance because of one, our age gap, 12 years, I'm 26 and he's 38, and two, the fact that this will be his second marriage and third engagement. I understand why my family would be nervous and have questions, but they have not given him a fair chance. It feels like I'm living two separate lives and can't get real about wedding planning until slash unless they get on board. Any advice is greatly appreciated. And again, please keep this anonymous. Aww. Oof, Leslie. I'm sorry, honey. I'm so sorry, Leslie. Yeah. Well, this is just sad that she even feels this way. Um, but I have like top of mind, like if your parents don't think he is worthy of you, that's on them. Mm-hmm. It's not a feeling that you also have to take on yourself. Right. But This happened to um, a friend of a friend who um, actually her her husband, they did not approve of. Okay. And then he went on to build this amazing company and like they are living so lavishly now. Like he, it wasn't his intention to prove them wrong, but he just like made something for his family and himself. And like it really, I don't know, it was so good. And that- was like nice to be like told you, told you. 
<laughs> well, that's kind of what I thought of too, because I I could understand trepidations with the situation as it, as it is. Someone was married before; they've been engaged, you know, a, a couple of times. Yeah. But I think the important thing is to just be logical about it. Like, yeah. If it sounds like she can't move forward with her wedding plans, so she obviously is like very close to her family. Right. This is important to her. Well, it's it's important f- to have like family validation, of course. Yeah. But I think. If you make a list, a logical list, not just like, Daddy, I love him, you know, yeah. you you have to really say he is an amazing provider. He mm-hmm. is going to be an incredible father for these reasons. Mm-hmm. He supports me. He makes me a better person. I've excelled in these categories Literally. since being with him. Like if you can give them concrete, logical, not just like, I want to be with him and you guys are being mean. Not saying you're doing that, Leslie, but I, I want you to <laughs> think about this on all angles. And like, right. If the- it's really that important to you, like show them. Yes. Show how them. he has changed or how he just makes you feel. Yes. Like at the end of the day, it's how someone makes you feel like you'll always remember that person for that. Yes. Um, and maybe take some more time to like have him and your family hang out. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And it's awkward when your family doesn't approve of someone to bring them in. But to I feel a like circle, but it has to it's, happen. It's like the lack of getting to know someone. Yes. So maybe they just haven't gotten to know him because they have this guard up. So definitely literally find any excuse for to get your family and your soon to be husband together. Yeah. And then they'll like have a few laughs, have a couple beers, be like, I really like this guy for you, Leslie. Like, yes. And I really are, see what you see in him. There are many reasons why someone might get divorced and it's mm-hmm. stigmatized. A lot of people really judge people who get divorced. But until if your family really loves you and respects you, by the way, because this is a decision that you have made. So right. I'm not saying that your family is disrespecting you. Don't take it that way. But <laughs> you could say, you know, I I feel bad that you don't trust my judgment. Like I've chosen to marry this man and you're telling me I'm wrong. Like you've raised me to be this person who should like knows what she deserves and this is what I deserve and what I want for my future. Life like takes you down so many roads. Who's to say what happens next? But like from this step forward, like just get to know him better Mm -hmm. and then we'll take it from there. And don't lose your cool ever. Remain logical, remain level-headed no matter how pissed off you get. Just always bring it back to, well, you know, your good argument because Mm -hmm. once you crack, they're going to be like, she's nuts. She shouldn't be married. She's, you know, (laughs) they're going to judge you. Don't don't crack, Leslie. David, Uh, any insight as a, as a gentleman? I know you're a young man. You're far from marriage, you know, but but also, you know, that probably takes a toll on the guy too. Like if the parents don't approve. Yeah. What would you do if you were in love with someone, you asked them to marry you and dad was like, (laughs) I would feel like I would definitely try introducing them. But if there's right? like no hope for this happening, you just kind of have to get over it. Yeah. If you're like, I, I'm choosing this person to marry. It doesn't, you know, the approval of my parents might not matter too much mm-hmm. and just kind of go with it. It's As your the man, life. if you're the man mm-hmm. and like the love of your life's parents are like, screw David, he's, he's no good. Like, what are you <laughs> right. saying? I'll, I'll try not to take it personally, oh, but I'll that's... definitely, yeah, I'll try to make it work. You'll like you're try to man. like show them like you yeah, actually yeah. are like... The shit. Yeah. Exactly. You're totally. like, I'm actually really fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. You just don't know me. Yeah. yeah. They don't know him, Leslie. Yeah. Like, you know him, so get them to know him like you do. That's great advice. Thanks, yeah. my dream team. I think I think we're going to— There is hope. There's definitely hope. And yeah. please write back in. And if anyone else has questions or wants advice on something, you can always email me. My email is in the show notes and everywhere. But for our premarital counseling sessions, we always keep it anonymous. So I love that. Yeah, it's fun. And That's so cute. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I hope, I hope Leslie, that was helpful, Leslie. Yes. Good we good love luck, you. Leslie. Good luck. <laughs> now for my favorite part of the show, the after party. This is where I ask my guests rapid fire questions about their upcoming wedding, starting with Honeymoon Hotspots, brought to you by HoneyFund, the number one honeymoon and cash registry. Listeners of the prenup get $25 added to their account when they register at honeyfund.com slash prenup. Okay, on to the after party. We learned all about your honeymoon, which sounds so fabulous, but if you could recommend any honeymoon destination to a couple, where would you recommend? Okay, besides Italy and Greece. Yes. Um, 
an African safari would be so cool. That sounds really cool. So I know someone who's there now, not personally, but on social media, and she's staying at this hotel that there's a pool and like the the elephants are drinking the water out of the pool. And you're, it's so crazy. And like, so and like yeah. you have to do that trip before you have children because safety. Totally. Um, but you're seeing like <laughs> hyenas and like leopards and lions and like giraffes. Like so cool. It's and really it's cool. way different than going to Disney Animal Kingdom. Okay? <laughs> so I think take that extravagant trip now because if you, if you do want kids, like yeah. – um, you won't be able to be like, okay, let's like let's go to Thailand. That's the truth. Like, uh, absolutely. Austra- my, Nick was trying to get me to go to Australia. I personally can't do long flights. Yeah. Um, That's but a maybe tough one. if you like get married in Europe and then you go to Australia and then you bounce back. I don't know. Yeah, you can make your it, way around the globe. M- take the extravagant trip. Yeah. Yeah. Just do it. Do it Just now. Just do it. You'll make the money back. Money I, comes back. Money comes back. The experience. Yeah. You only well, have not. fleeting You time. only live once. <laughs> So true. So true. Travel. Travel, baby. And if you're scared of flying, take a melatonin. <laughs> yes. Take a Xanax. Yep. Even a little dramamine, you know, yeah. it, it helps things. Like, I understand. I take magnesium if I ever get anxious during a flight. Yeah. And I do. I'm an anxious flyer. But, yeah. like, what? You're never going to go Travel, anywhere? You yeah. got to do it. You have to live your life. Have to live your life. Mm-hmm. Sage advice. Okay. <laughs> Dream wedding cake flavor. What are you picking? Oh, my gosh. This is hard. I know. For our wedding cake, we're just doing like traditional Italian, like fruit on top, mm-hmm. like pastry vibes. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't judge cake, cake flavors. Um, I love a tiramisu. That'd be sick if that was in a tiered cake form. Heck yeah. Probably can't happen because it's soggy. Figure but out a way. You could figure out a way. Top layer. Um, yeah. I don't know. Maybe pistachio because that's my favorite. Yeah. Pistachio. Mm, yeah. Delish. Yeah. Okay. What is one song that's going to get you on the dance floor at a wedding? Ooh. Um, <laughs> I can't <laughs> say John Summit because <laughs> – <laughs> but I love – I'm a big, like, house music girl. Okay. So Elenium – Griffin were like I was like a groupie when I was I young. I know Griffin. That's yeah. like one. That I would I like know. go to Marquee and be there until five a.m. <laughs> I was like the last. It was like my birthday. I was like the last one like there. I was like I love it. Um, I think any house music or we're we're having a band, so like any Italian music, like play some Frank Sinatra. I'm there for sure. Oh. I'm there. Oh I'm vibing. Gosh. Our first dance song is gonna be so nice too. I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh. Yeah. I'm just gonna be in my bed watching all of your wedding content, <laughs> scrolling, <laughs> phone falling on my face. It's gonna be oh. so fabulous. Literally amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you could invite one living dream guest to your wedding, who would it be? Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber? Oh my God, so you're the second person who said this. Okay, I literally love him. You love the Biebs? Yeah. Oh, obsessed. Nick Would you knows. have him perform? Yes, but he cost $10 million. <laughs> I know, I know that <laughs> For wedding. For 30 minutes. He, ah, yeah, worth didn't it. did he just perform at that? Yeah, combined? and not, uh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. The richest man in Asia's son, wild. Yeah, that's him a and good Haley guest. there, so cool. Oh my God, that would but be. But like Lake Como vibe, like obviously, um, who lives in Lake Como? There's a lot of um, villas. It's, I, mean, uh, I was going to say Leonardo DiCaprio, but it's not him. He goes it's off at George, George Clooney. George Clooney. Yes. George, George Clooney could there. be cool. I did think about sending invites to famous people. Are you going to do it? It's not too late. I don't know. You could still do it. My invitations were expensive. Yeah. Like, I Screw that. Can't waste <laughs> that. <laughs> um, yeah, I heard that if you invite famous people, like, they'll send you a gift. Yeah, they'll, they'll send gifts or they'll send, like, a little thank notes. you. Like, yeah. so sorry we can't come. Yeah, that's a good Here's tip. a coupon. Yeah. If you send, like, to a restaurant. I don't know. Fabulous. People do crazy things. Always shoot your shot. But Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. We love it. Mm-hmm. He'd be a great guest. Okay, and last question I have for you, honey. So if you could give one practical piece of advice to anyone planning a wedding, what would you tell them? Oh. One piece of advice? Just one, yeah. And it doesn't have to be, you know, anything too deep, just... Um, okay, so this is, like, advice for wedding day, mm-hmm. and I read it in an article, like, years ago, but it was, you are the guest of honor at your wedding, you're not the host. Yes. Don't feel like you need to talk to everybody, they're there for you, 
spend the day with your soon to be husband or wife. Oh my gosh, louder. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's that is really really well, good Nick advice. and I are not going around and saying hi to everyone no. like we're just going to have a, the best time and run into people, chat, dance. It's a party. Dance. Yes. Yeah. People will find you. They're there for you. Yeah. Yes. You are the guest. I love it. Maria, thank you so much for doing this. Thanks so much. Tell everyone where they can find you on your socials and everywhere. Yes. Um, Instagram and TikTok is both Maria with three A's at the end and then Marzulo. Um, we'll link it. Um, I'm not changing my last name um, on my handle. Okay. So won't change. Gorgeous. Um, and I do want to start like getting into YouTube on our honeymoon. I want to like, I want that to be like the time that we start vlogging. So Smart. you can find me on YouTube too. Oh, fabulous. Well, Maria, thank you again for being here, my Thanks. love. Thanks. My and first so podcast. Your first podcast. How did it feel? So cool. I love <laughs> chit-chatting with a huge mic in my face. I know. It's fun, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're the best. I want to come back. Uh, Bring me back. Let's, ca- let's, let's do talk to a other recap people. of your wedding. Yeah. Let's do it. Ooh. Right? Okay. Yeah. Down. I'll be back. We'll plan for (laughs) September. All right. Thank you, honey. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Thanks for tuning into the prenup. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform or on the Love Stories TV YouTube channel. Follow at the underscore pre underscore nup and at Love Stories TV on Instagram for more. Have feedback or suggestions for the next episode? Feel free to reach out to us at podcast at lovestoriestv.com. 